I thought it would be a fun video to show you guys a bunch of fiber artists that I think are super cool and I think you should follow and they're huge inspirations for me. Every time I see work from these people, my mind is just blown. Some of these people are textile designers, knitwear designers, um, embroiderers. Some of them merge my graphic design background and interests like typography with the textile um, and fiber art world. I hope that these can be an inspiration to you. Um, and you find them inspiring and you follow them because they're amazing. I'm relatively new to the fiber arts community. I only started crocheting like two years ago, three years ago, I think two years ago. So by no means is this like an exhaustive list at all. It's just a few artists and designers I wanted to mention and kind of like spread the word if you are unfamiliar with them. But please leave a comment with some of your favorite fiber artists as well, or even just like knitwear or crochet designers. I get so many comments from different parts of the world and I know that you know about someone that I don't know about. And I know that I'm gonna show you someone that you might not know about. So please share in the comments, I want to learn more. I'm gonna start with this designer named Jeffrey Sinjic. Sinkit. Disclaimer, I know I'm gonna butcher some of these names. It's unintentional. I'm gonna try my best, but Jeffrey is based in San Francisco, California, and he makes these amazing quilted pieces that have like typography and incorporate signage. I looked into all of these artists like about pages on their websites and read some interviews, and I by no means know everything, but kind of what I gathered is he gets inspired by handmade signage, architecture, long-standing storefronts, and other human-made alterations of a place. And this is a quote from an interview that he was in. He said, things are worth celebrating as they are what create the unique fabric of the places that we live. Not to keep reading verbatim from his website, but he words it better than I could. Um, he says, like a handmade quilt, elements of the urban environment offer people a sense of place, belonging, and safety. They both have traces of the hand that created them and are unique in their own ways. They can be displayed, passed down, altered, mended, or repurposed or discarded. They represent a part of their community, surroundings, and history, and offer different meanings for anyone who lives or who lives with or around them. My goal is to highlight these elements of the world we inhabit. His approach is really cool and really smart. Formally, I think the color palettes he uses are amazing. Um, I especially love the ones that have just like, like this one, just a bottle of Clorox or a bottle of Tide. I think these are so cool. I'm probably going to say that about everything I show you, but this just shows that you can take something like quilting that's like a fundamental part of being human, right? Like quilting has probably been a thing since the beginning of time. Um, and he's like reinventing it and making it new in a way. Like I feel like I haven't seen this technique used in this way before. And I always will have a soft spot for typography. I love this for sale by owner one. And yeah, just check out his work if you are unfamiliar with him. The next person I'm gonna talk about is actually a pair. They own a knitwear company called Nongrack. It is comprised of Cherry and Home. They are both based in New York City. They're a couple, I believe. And I feel like probably if you crochet or knit and have an Instagram, you've seen their work before. But in case you haven't, I had to show it. Their use of color is unlike anything I've ever seen. I love their use of color. Their use of texture with all of the brushed out mohair is amazing. The silhouettes are creative. I just, I'm obsessed with them. I feel like their heavy use of mohair, like when you look at these pieces, they don't seem knit or whatever. They just like evoke this feeling and emotion and like the color palettes have so much depth to them. I also went back and looked at their archive and some of these knitwear designs are just so beautiful. The pattern, the texture, the color, they do everything in a way that's like playful and approachable, but like so sophisticated at the same time. This one's one of my favorites. Ugh, I'm a sucker for anything that's this like fluorescent coral or whatever pink and paired with the black and yellow, like I love it. This, amazing, no notes. Amazing, no notes. Do you wanna know what I would do for those pants? Probably not. You should also read this interview that they did. It kind of gives you like more backstory about how they started their company and like where they wanna go with it, um, which I won't get into in this video, but definitely read it. Next, kind of in this vein of like knitwear designers um, is Millie Sanders or Saunders. Um, she is a knitwear and textile designer based in Yorkshire. And I found her just on Instagram, I think. Like her work caught my eye on the Explore page or something. I have no idea. To this day, if I'm like trying to plan a color palette or something, I always look at her work because she just like takes 
what you think things should be like if you want to use purple in a color palette you think there's like certain colors that would go with purple or whatever she just like takes that and flips it on its head and her use of color is just really inspiring to me and i'm not super familiar with knitting because i don't knit or have a knitting machine i think most of this is done on a knitting machine but i could be wrong like look at how amazing this is and some of the shaping that she creates with the different stitches and stuff is gorgeous definitely check her out if you're starting a new project with color work because again i'm obsessed with everything she does and i think you should follow her i was reading about her on her website and it says her process involves swatching and developing knitted fabrics curating color and texture collections and creating knitwear patterns to produce custom and limited edition pieces definitely check her out the next artist i'm going to talk about is loni Huskeldson. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. He is based in Reykjavik and I wish that I owned something that he created because his work is one of my favorites that I'm showing you in this video. I think his approach is really interesting too. Um, this is a quote from him. He said, I like thinking that us humans are a part of nature rather than invaders of nature. A consumer product in conversation with organic elements tells a story and there is a sense of movement that comes along with it it asks the question of how did this get there. For example, this one like really throws my mind for a loop. It's like this beautiful natural like canvas background and this beautiful detailed embroidery and there's things like a box of Ritz crackers, an egg, a head scratcher. Like the more you stare at it, the more you just want to laugh, but in the best way possible. And he also incorporates as his quote said, like elements of nature and kind of merges them in a really fun way. This is another one that I love. There's like a Mountain Dew bottle, an egg, a mop, and then some flowers. Depending on who's viewing this, like you could find completely different meaning from it. I just love how he plays with that juxtaposition of nature and these like human made objects and what they mean to us in that context. Sorry if the art school part of me is coming out. Um, I just said juxtaposition and I wish I didn't. This one. It's so fun. I want to hang this on my wall and stare at it all day long. The Henry, like, shop vac or whatever. The keys, just the the hung-up pants, a duster, Gandhi gloves. Like, what am I looking at? But I love it and I want to buy it. These shopping bags are represented in a really beautiful way. He has a few pieces I could find that are just nature elements and don't have, like, the human made in them, which are also beautiful. He's such a talented embroider. It kind of makes me want to get into embroidery, even though that's probably a rabbit hole I'll regret going down. It's beautiful. You can do so much with it. Sometimes like pixel art translated to crochet just like doesn't do it for me. Like it's not representative enough sometimes. Does that make sense? All right, moving on. <laughs> the next artist is, is it Teleki or Teleki? Teleki Schwarz. Um, she is based in the Netherlands. I think I said before someone else was my favorite. Teleki is actually my favorite. Mmm. It's so hard to pick favorites because I purposely picked ones that I love. Tilgi's at the top for me. She creates the most stunning embroidery. Should I start embroidering? Mm. I love when artists take kind of what we saw with Loni or um, Jeffrey, these like mundane things about society and they turn them into works of art and like take them out of context and put their own spin on it and like compare and contrast it to other things and ultimately are representing the things that speak to them. I feel like Tilaki's work is almost like, at first glance, it seems like a, a visual diary of sorts or like visual poetry, which is super cool to me. I love the layers of her work. There's a first read, there's a second read, there's a third read. There's a read that you'll only get if you zoom in <laughs> a lot. I love the mixture of like typography and some little paragraphs with more like illustrative parts of it. I feel like I could stare at this for so long and almost read it like a book. The color is amazing. The texture and pattern usage is amazing. It's like expressive. I love her work. I could show you her work all day long, but if you're interested, you can look into it more. Last but not least is this Instagram account that I found. Her name on Instagram is mary.type and it says her name's Mary Lean. If you know more about this person, please let me know, but there was kind of like limited information about her herself. She's an embroiderer and a type designer. I believe from the little information I could gather, um, her daughter is a type designer um, named Morgan or Morgan, I'm not French, and a calligrapher who is based in Paris. I think they're both based in Paris. Her daughter designs a type and then she embroiders it, I think. But she also might 
design some of the type. Either way, it's beautiful. I might have said this earlier, but I have a background in graphic design, so I'm always a sucker for a good type. And I feel like the type design is amazing, let alone the way that it's embroidered. I feel like it adds so much more to it. I didn't realize how much embroidery I'm showing in this video, but like it might be a sign of the next hobby I need to pick up. This typography is beautiful. I love the sharp serifs on it. I think representing it through embroidery, a really cool way to bring it to life and apply it to something more tactile. A lot of times I've done things as a designer where it only ever lives online and even just getting like a simple print of something is like, oh my God, it exists in real life, what? So taking something like a typeface that would otherwise live digitally and embroidering it is just a beautiful way to like bring it into the real world. I would frame this. I would frame this. I probably would frame everything here. It turns it into art and I love it so much. And all of these are just like black or brown thread on a white canvas, which something about that contrast like speaks to me, I don't know. And this last one I found was, I think originally like gridded out with Legos, as you can see in the background, and then she translated it to embroidery as well, which if you embroider or ever do color work with crochet or knitting, it's all on a pixel grid and it translates to like the way that the stitches are gridded. If you have kids that have Legos, now you know there's an adult way to play with them is make a beautiful swashy G because you can. That is the last fiber textile knitwear artist, designer, whatever. I'm using all these terms loosely that I have to show you for today. I will link all of these artists' websites if they have them and Instagrams and interviews if you wanna learn more about them. And please leave comments with fiber artists that you love. I love watching these types of videos where I get exposed to things that I might not have known about before. Um, so let me know if you like this video. I think it would also be cool to do one that was just like crochet designer related. And I have a few that I would love to share with you guys if you don't know about them, but I'm sure there's amazing designers out there that I don't know about yet. So leave a comment, check out the designer's work that I mentioned and stay inspired, stay making and creating and being inspired by the things around you and the world around you and the people around you and I think that's all I have to say. I have a few tutorials in the works so subscribe if you want to be notified when those come out and follow me on Instagram if you want and I will see you later. Bye!